Good morning, V fam. On behalf of the whole church, let me just say welcome. My name is Chris, and I am the lead pastor, and it's going to be an incredible morning. I hope you're as excited as I am. If this is your very first time, and you're joining us online, or you're here in the service, um, welcome. We want to connect with you. Text the word VISION to 94000, and it'll be our way of connecting with you. Just fill out uh, just a little bit of information so we can just have record of your visit. And if you're in-house, make sure to stop by the guest services tent before you leave. Um, we we want to put a name with a face and give you a gift. It's just our way of saying thanks for joining us today. Um, we love to give back, and we have a free resource called the VISION app. Make sure to download it. It's got tons of resources to help you in your faith journey, ways to connect today. Um, there's tons of events and things that are going on in the life of the church. Speaking of which, check out what's happening at Vision. Hey church, I'm Kelly, here to invite you to the Next Steps Lunch after service on Sunday, February 20th, right here in the Fellowship Hall. This will be your class and your way to learn everything about vision and also information on taking your next steps with life group, serving, and becoming a part of the vision family through membership. So don't miss this. Sign up on the app today for the next steps class on Sunday, February 20th, right after service. Hey ladies, Mandy Pratt here. I wanted to let you know that we have a women's spring Bible study and it's coming up soon. So mark those calendars for Sunday night February 27th from 6 to 8 p.m. This is going to be our night of worship, but guess what, ladies? That night, we are going to be able to meet the author of our study that we're going to do, Heather Dixon, and she wrote our study, Ready, Finding Courage to Face the Unknown. This is going to be a six-week study that takes us through Joshua chapters 1 through 5. I'm so excited for this opportunity, ladies. So mark those calendars for Sunday night, February 27th from 6 to 8. You'll get to meet Heather. You'll get to get your books. Now, speaking of, the cost of the book is $17. You'll need to head over to our website or to our social media site or the app and register by February 6th. This is going to be a time just for ladies. No kids, no husbands, no distractions. Just women coming together to grow in God's Word. So sign up, girls. Let's do this life together. I can't wait to see you there. Hello everyone, Philip here. I am so excited to have this opportunity to launch this new young adult ministry right here at Vision Baptist Church in Raleigh, North Carolina. And we are all so excited to see how God's going to transform the lives of these young adults in 2022 in the 919 community. We've partnered up with some other great local churches to go all out for an event that will be held once a month just for young adults uh, from the ages of 18 to 29 for an, uh, one night of worship from 7 to 8.30 p.m. And then afterwards, free coffee trucks are gonna roll in and they're gonna just create a safe environment to have fellowship, meet new people, and just have community with others. So mark your calendar for January 25th at Providence Church in Raleigh. Following that, our young adult group uh, will start a new 20-week series titled 2020 Vision, Adulting Through the Lens of Christ. And every Wednesday, starting February 2nd, we'll meet at my home in Wendell. So if you have any questions, please email me Philip, that's P H I L I P, at fpwake.com. Philip at fpwake.com. Can't wait to see you. It's going to be great. Much love. Hi, Vision family. My name is Wendy Williams. I'm the Vision Outreach Director, and we have a lot of opportunities to serve and love in our community coming up throughout the year. If you are interested in getting involved in outreach, we are having an outreach interest meeting on January 30th directly after church in the Fellowship Hall. We hope to see you then. Hey V fam, it's Heather, your Kids Ministry Director slash Chaos Coordinator slash Kid Wrangler. I wanted to remind you of some really cool things coming up in Vision Kids. We have family ice skating on January 28th. Sign up on the app if you want to join us doing that. On February 6th, it's Family Sunday, so there will be no kids ministry, sad face emoji. However, we are having child dedications that morning, so be sure to sign up if you would like to be a part of dedicating your child to the Lord. This is amazing. I'm pretty excited about all the things that are happening in Vision Kids, so make sure to stay connected and invite your friends.
Hey, well, good morning. Welcome. Uh, if we haven't had a chance to met, meet, my name is Chris. I'm the lead pastor here, and I'm pretty bummed if you're seeing this because it means we're not gathering in person because of Snowmageddon 2022 in North Carolina. You know, if it's a chance of snow, then the grocery stores are empty. Everybody's freaking out. Everybody's making plans, and and so we uh, went ahead and recorded this. So. Uh, I'm not actually live. I'm sitting here watching myself, which is really weird. But hey, uh, thank you for joining us online. Um, right now, if you haven't had a chance already, just let everybody know uh, where you're joining from in the chat. Thank you for being here. Uh, we're in a series that we've called Everyday Habits, how to start our new year off right. And it's more than just a habit. Um, we're talking about spiritual disciplines, spiritual disciplines, things that will... Um, draw us closer to God in 2022. I don't know about you, but 2021, 2020 has been tough on in, in everyone, to be honest with you. And, and I want to be more like God this year. I want to be closer to God. I want to think like God. I want to do things that, that God wants me to do. And so we've been talking about this. Last week was pretty cool, wasn't it? Um, we talked about the power of prayer. And I, took, I, I issued a challenge um, it's a seven up challenge and it was cool to see at the beginning of the week everybody was all in and and then as the week went on I wonder how many of you um, were consistent all the way through seven days the first seven minutes you prayed for others you thank God um, if, if that's you just put it in the chat uh, just maybe you've got a testimony of what God did but we know that prayer matters that prayer makes us look like Jesus that prayer means we depend on God more than we do ourselves. And, and this week, this week we're going to be talking about another spiritual discipline that I believe um, probably, if not the most important, is, is one of the most important spiritual disciplines that we can put into practice. And if you're wondering why are we doing this, it's about Jesus and not about what we do, that's true, but let me remind you of our theme verse for this series, 1 Timothy chapter 4, verses 7 through 8. The Bible says to train yourself for godliness. While bodily training is of some value, godliness is of value in every way. Every way. I, I can hit the gym to make my muscles better and to make me feel good and, and to be a little healthier. But man, when I train myself for godliness, it helps me in every way. As it holds promise for the present life and also for the life to, com to come. Today's spiritual discipline that I want to preach about and teach about and talk about is the Bible. The Bible. If you, if you think about this, your Bible is pretty amazing. The Bible has 66 separate books written by over 40 people and written over a 1600 year period. According to the Guinness Book of World Records, the Bible holds the records in books sold and distributed in history, the most ever. Since the year 1815, get this, over 5 billion copies of the Bible have been sold and distributed. It's got, it's got close to 3,000 languages and dialects that it's been translated into. I mean, it's on our phones. The Bible is everywhere. So no doubt, it's a popular book. But if you think about like people's attitude towards the Bible, think about how you think about the Bible. You probably fall in one of three categories, right? There's a lot of people say that the Bible is just another book. Maybe that's you. It's a book. It's got some pretty cool stories and some wise sayings. There's a whole lot of names that we can't pronounce. Sometimes it's boring. Sometimes it's cool to see what happens. But them, to them, that's the Bible. It's just another book. To some people, it's an important book. It's an important book. And, and we know this because 88% of Americans own a Bible. 88% of you own a Bible. In fact, if you, if you look around your house, there's probably... A Bible in your house. The average house has almost five Bibles in it. Almost five. I love averages like that. But a lot of people are for the Bible. 
you're watching this, you're like, yeah, the, the Bible is important in my life. The Bible, I, I'm for the Bible. I have a Bible. It's on my phone. I, let, me just, let me just tell you something. Bible ownership is strong. People own Bibles. But Bible engagement is weak. I mean, we, it's one thing to own a Bible. It's another thing to get in the Bible. And that brings me to the third type of people. These are the type of people who don't believe that the Bible is just an important book. They believe that the Bible is the book. It shapes how they think and what they do. It shapes their world view. They understand what it means when Jesus said, man doesn't live by bread alone. So I, I, I ask you this morning, what's your view of the Bible? Is it just another book? Is it important to you? Or is it your source? And see, there's probably another category to be really honest with you. There's probably many of you who know what the Bible should be to you. You know that it is the Word of God. And you know that it is important. But honestly, like if you look at your schedule and how much time you spend in the Bible... What you say doesn't match up with what you do. You, you may not get into the Bible because it's boring. You find it boring. Or you're too busy. Or, or there's some controversial things and things that you see in the world's not matching up with what you've heard about the Bible. And so you, it causes doubt. You don't know if the Bible is relevant for today. You, you're not much of a reader, so you really, you know it's good, but you... You would say you believe the Bible, that you trust the Bible, that, you, that, that, that it's infallible, inerrant. But reality is, you may say those things, but the truth is you don't know the Bible. See, knowing the Bible is not only important, but it is necessary. I mean, can you imagine, check this out. So the Carolina Panthers, I'm not a Carolina Panthers fan. I don't dislike them, but I, 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 I don't root for them. I root for the team. Um, and, and so... We have our own issues, but the, here's what I know about the Carolina Panthers this year. They didn't have a quarterback. They tried Sam Darnold. Eh. They pulled back Cam Newton. They need a quarterback. They need a quarterback. Can you imagine if you were the quarterback for the Carolina Panthers? And can you imagine if you put on the jersey went to play the game, and you didn't know the playbook. You didn't know what the coach expected. You didn't know what the calls were that needed to be. You didn't, you, you, you didn't know the ins. You didn't know the outs of the organization. How would that go? See, you may put on the jersey. You may step into the game. But you're not really a part of the team. There's nothing you can do. You can't be a successful quarterback if you don't know the playbook. How dare us, listen to me, how dare us claim to be God's people and not know God's word? I mean, we have got to, church, listen, we have got to be intentional about our time. We have got to take the time to study. We have got to take the time to learn. We've got to take the time to read, to apply, to study the Holy Scriptures. Let me just tell you, fellas, what guy does not study a woman that he wants to pursue? You better, you better study her. You better know what she likes. You better know what she doesn't like. You, 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 if you're married, you know your woman. You know your wife, right? I know Mandy is going to be mad before I ever even come home. I mean, that's just reality. I know I'm in trouble every, even before she ever says anything because I have taken the time. I have been intentional about studying her, about studying her body language, about studying her words, her habits. Listen to me. If you really want to know God, you have to know his word. 
And that brings me to 2 Timothy chapter 3. Let me set the context for you. 2 Timothy chapter 3. Go ahead and open up the Word of God since we're preaching on the Word, teaching on the Word. Hopefully you have a copy of the Word. The context is that Paul, the Apostle Paul, he's awaiting his execution in prison. He's on death's doorstep. Any moment. These are his last days. Many theologians believe this is one of the final things Paul writes before he is executed. And the world is just like it is now. The world is dark. The world is confusing. Leaders are telling you one thing. Family is telling you another thing. There's different religion, ideologies. There's confusion out there. What to do, what not to do, how to do it. A lot of false teaching. And Timothy's this young buck, this up-and-coming preacher. And so Paul knows that this this is a tough day to live in. In fact, in fact, beginning in verse 1 of chapter 3, Paul reminds Timothy how messed up and jacked up this world is. Listen to this. He says, understand this. In the last days, there will come times of difficulty. Now look, we are in the last days. I don't know when Jesus is coming back. No man knows the appointed time when Jesus will return. But these are dark times. These are hard times. These are difficult times. Verse 2 clarifies this for me. For people will be lovers of self. How many selfish people we got out there? How many people do you know? They just think about themselves. They are trying to succeed for them. They All their life is about them. Paul says this is an indication of the last days. They're going to be lovers of money, enough said. They're going to be proud, arrogant, abusive, disobedient to their parents. Come on, holler at me, parents. Ungrateful, unholy, heartless, unappeasable, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not loving, good, treacherous, reckless, swollen with conceit, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of of God having the appearance of godliness but denying its power I'm tired of hearing and seeing Christian and churches who claim to be godly but when you walk in the doors or but when you hear them a conversation there is no form of godliness there's no power in there they claim to be godly but there's no power Paul says in verse 6 for among them are those who creep into households they capture weak women burdened with sins and led astray by various passions, always learning and never able to arrive at a knowledge of truth. Let me tell you something. Stop listening to social media. Stop listening to the news so much. Stop anchoring your hope in what the world tells you. You're not going to be able to to believe based on what you hear. The media is going to tell you something. The world will tell you something. Mom and dad may tell you something. But in the end, let's let's strip it all back. You have to know what truth is. What is truth? We, We were all wondering about the virus or about the economy or about politics or or about my job or what is truth? You got a situation and you you're trying to figure out what's right or wrong. What is truth? Skip down to verse 14. Paul says, but as for you, Timothy, as you, church, continue in what you have learned and have firmly believed, knowing from whom you learned it, and how from childhood you have been acquainted with the sacred writings, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. Paul writes down and says, Timothy, church, listen up. Remember what you learned. Remember what you've been taught. See, Timothy was trained and he was raised up by godly women, by a mom and a grandma. The scriptures identify them as Eunice and Lois. Eunice and Lois. They prayed for him. They taught him. They trained him. Let me just say something. Thank God for godly parents. Thank God for grandmamas and granddads and mamas and daddies and aunts and uncles who were consistently pouring in to their children, consistently making them go to church, hearing, praying for them, pouring the scriptures over them. 
who think God's word is important, who prioritize God's word over other things. Paul writes to Timothy and says, you better remember those days. You better remember those moments when mama was praying for you, when you were sitting in the church and you didn't want to be. You better remember those moments. And he says, remember the sacred writings. Remember the, the scriptures. The scriptures. How cool is that? That God, God chose to write it down. God could have thought something. God could have just spoke it. God, God could have just revealed it. But God so loved you that he chose to write his message down. Let me say, tell you something. There's just something about getting a note in the mail. I got a postcard this past week from one of our church members just thanking me for, for, for how I'm pastoring and leading. And, and it, you know what that did for me? Just to see that, that she took time to write it out on a postcard, and I was able to read it, and now I can save it. Let me tell you something. There's something about writing it down, and God loves you so much that he didn't just tell you. He actually showed you by having it written down. Let me tell you something. You've got to get familiar with God's word. Spurgeon, Spurgeon, a great theologian, said, a Bible that is falling apart usually belongs to somebody who isn't. You better know this word inside and out. And if you've been in church for a long time, you know this. You've heard it over and over and over. But the scripture says, when you know the word, you're going to be made wise. And I don't know about you, but I need some wisdom today. I need some direction today. I need to know what to do, do and what not to do and who to avoid. Some of us are just waiting on an answer prayer. We did prayer last week, and we've been praying and praying, and you're waiting and waiting without ever opening the Word. Here's the problem. A, a few months ago, I did a sermon called Trash the Trash. Trash the Trash. I talked about the thoughts in our mind. That if we think trash, we're going to speak trash. If we think trash, we're going to believe trash. Because our minds are filled with too much trash. We're sitting there scrolling and we're just filling our minds with pointless trash and lusts of the flesh and, and things that we want and pride. And, and, and we, we watch the news and we listen to trash. Um, we, we're listening to music that, that's just trash. We take advice and, and it's not godly advice. And we just, all throughout this world we listen to trash and trash and trash and trash. And pretty soon you know what we start to believe about ourselves? That we're trash. Because what goes in will eventually come out. And you'll start speaking trash to other people. So you fill your mind with garbage with impurities, with depressing thoughts, with, with, with the idea that you're never going to be anybody, that life will always be difficult, that, that no one loves you, that you're always going to be alone, guess what you're going to start to believe? Those things. Garbage in, garbage out. We need to replace the trash, come on somebody, with truth. You've got to replace the trash, the garbage in your life with truth. So what is truth? Right? Because some people say, well, truth is relative. Whatever you want to believe. Truth is not relative. Let me tell you what truth is. John 14, 6, Jesus says, I am the way and I am the truth and the life. See, truth is not just a what. Truth is a who and his name is Jesus. John 1, 1. In the beginning was the word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. In verse 14, the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. In the beginning was the Word. Come on, somebody. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God and the Word was God. And then the Word became flesh. Jesus Christ. Jesus is the Word. Jesus says, I am the way and I am the truth and I am the life. Jesus is the only way. Jesus is the only truth. It's not Jesus plus your works. It's not Jesus plus your church attendance. It's not Jesus plus praying or Jesus in reading. It is Jesus Christ. He is the way and he is the truth and he is the life. You want truth today? You want truth today? 
you open the word. You want wisdom today? You open the word. You want freedom today? You want hope for today? You open the word. You don't open your phone. That, the phone isn't going to give you hope. The phone isn't going to give you love. More friends and followers doesn't mean that you're more accepted in love. You'll only find that in Christ. You better get in the word so that word gets into you. Look at verse 16. It says, all scripture, all scripture, Old Testament, New Testament, is given by inspiration of God. Do you know what that, that word inspiration means? It means God breathed. God breathed. It means when you look at your Bible and you read what's in the passages, and you meditate on them, and you think about those things, it's actually God's breath coming into your heart, into your life. See, long ago, in Hebrews 101, Hebrews 101, it says this, Long ago, at many times and in many ways, God spoke to our fathers by the prophets. So before Jesus, God would reveal himself through prophets, through visions, through theophanies, um, sometimes through miracles, an audible voice. This is how God spoke before Jesus. In verse 2 of Hebrews 1, it says, But in the last days he has spoken to us by his Son, whom he appointed the heir of all things, through whom also he created the world. Now that Jesus has come, God's not only revealing himself in the Old Testament, but now the New Testament, he revealed his Son. And he sent Matthew and Mark and Luke and John. They record the very words of Jesus Christ. And so all of the scriptures are inspired. They're breathed by God. If you, if you look at that, that word inspired, you, you think about, I don't know what you think about when you think about inspiration. As an athlete, I think of like inspiration. I remember um, back, I, I don't remember what decade it was, probably in the 90s, maybe the early 2000s, when Duke won the national championship and on a last second full court pass, Leitner turns and hits it. I'm not a Duke fan, but... But uh, some of you remember that. That was really inspiring, wasn't it? Or when the USA won the Hockey Olympics, um, that's inspiring. Or Rocky Balboa, man, I used to watch Rocky all the time. He inspired me, right, because he was the underdog. He was always looked like he wasn't going to win, and, and he would do it. A inspiring. But when we think of inspiration, maybe you think of athletes or musicians or creative peoples or, or, or academia. Demics or, or writers, right? And they can be very inspiring. These are great people. The best of the best. Is that what, is that what inspiration means here? That, that God chose men to write this Bible who were the cream of the crop? Who were the best of the best? Who were the most creative who could just really get you going? Let me just tell you, that's not it. Some of the authors of the Bible, man, they were shepherds. They were farmers, just your average people. Amos, he was a, a fig farmer. They weren't the cream of the crop here to pump you up and give you motivation. Maybe your pushback is, well, maybe they were just really smart. They were, they were, they were really intellects. Let me just ask you, would a smart man write a book? that condemns everyone on earth, including themselves, apart from believing in one single person. So when we say the Bible is inspired, like what, what does that mean? Second Peter chapter 1. It says that we have the prophetic word more fully confirmed to which you will do well to pay attention as to a lamp shining in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. Knowing this first of all, that no prophecy of scripture comes from someone's own interpretation. It wasn't like these men were just thinking about godly things and, and, and just writing it down. They didn't come up with this on their own. 
Verse 21, no prophecy was ever produced by the will of man. But men spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. I want you to understand this. Inspiration, inspiration did not originate in the minds of religious men. It's not an act of human will. But these men were moved by God. They were carried along by the Holy Spirit. It, it, that, when, when, it, when it talks about carried along, the word is actually a maritime metaphor. A ship, a ship going, being carried along, hoisting its sails, and going where the wind would blow it. That's how the inspiration of God works. The writers, they had their own backgrounds, they had their own styles of writing, but they raised their sails to speak, and the Holy Spirit took them to a destination so that was written was exactly what God said. I mean, the boat, the boat, the, 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 the boat, in that human boat, they're able to make their own kind of decisions. They've got enormous amounts of freedom on how, how to write in their own style. But all of it, all of it was moved by the inspiration of God. God breathed those words that these men wrote. It is the very breath of God that you hold in your hand. And if you're still pushing back and going, Chris, the Bible is still, it's just written by men. There's probably tons of errors and mistakes. And I just don't know if I could trust the Bible. If that's you, here's what I want, to, I want you to do. Assignment. Go rip up every single book you have and never read again. Because every book you have is written by men. So the next time your teacher comes to you and says, this is a wrong answer, you look at them and say, no it's not. You can't prove it because this was written by men. It's not going to go well if you do that. The Bible was penned by men, but inspired by by God. You want to know God? You want to hear from God? You want answers? You want clarity? You want truth? Get in the Word. Get in the Word. Well, I'm not a reader. I, 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 don't, I, I go to Google for my... Listen, listen to me. Google's good. Man, I Google a lot. And if I want information, I'm going to go to Google. But reading the Bible is not just for collecting information. Reading the Bible is not just for recreation. Reading the Bible is not even for inspiration. You want to know why you read the Bible? You don't read the Bible to be informed. You read the Bible to be transformed, to be something totally new. We don't need more information. We've got everything right here in the palm of our hand. We've got information. I, if you, I can find out stuff about you. I can find out stuff about your family. I, 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 can, I can Google whatever I want. I can go on social media and find out the latest trends and TikTok dances and, and everything. I don't need more information. I need to be made new. I need to think differently. I need to act differently. I need to speak differently. I need to believe differently. I don't need to just be better. I need to be made brand new. I need to be more like Jesus. I need to give more like Jesus. I need to respond in, in the midst of trials like Jesus. I need to be compassionate like Jesus. I need to see people who are hurting and broken and suffering and struggling like Jesus. I need to, I need to lead like Jesus. I don't need all these things from the world. I don't need more information. I need a transformation I'm going to tell you something. The reason that so many of us don't know what to do in their situations right now and don't know where to turn or, 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 or how to respond is because we don't know how Jesus responds because we don't know his word. We don't know his breath. Let me help you out. Do you remember when Jesus was being tempted by Satan? Matthew chapter 4, Jesus was led up to the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And after fasting, we talked about that last week, 40 days and 40 nights, the man was hungry. Jesus was hungry. 
And the tempter came and said to him, If you're the Son of God, Jesus, command these stones to become loaves of bread. Now listen to what Jesus says. It is written. He looks to the, the devil in the eye. He looks the enemy in the eye. And he says, let me tell you what scripture says. Let me tell you what my God has written. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. If the God, it, listen to me, if your Bible is God's breath written down, God's word written down, Jesus says, hey, listen, when the, when the enemy comes, you better refer back to it. You better know it inside and out. You better get in that word so the word gets into you. Y'all, if, if Jesus, the son of God, used scripture to fight against the enemy, don't you think that you're going to need scripture in your life to fight the daily grind of life? The reason you're so discouraged the reason you're so defeated, the reason there's not a lot of hope in your situations, the reason that you think the way you do about yourself, the reason that you're depressed or you have anxiety or you're worried, the reason that your marriage is right, it's not because of anything other than you don't know the word. We aren't strong enough, y'all, to do this life without him. It's not just about a one-time moment where you trusted Christ. This is about a daily grind where God is taking you from one glory to the next. Aren't you tired of wearing spiritual diapers? Don't you want to get off of, of the milk? It's time to grow up. You want to be godlier? It's time to put in some practices. And we got to get in the Word so the Word gets into us. Because the devil, he is walking around, sneaking up on you, attacking you in ways that you don't know. Some of you have gone through battles that you weren't ready for. That's what life does. And what happens is, you're in this fight, and you can't seem to get a victory. You can't seem to get ahead. It just seems to keep punching you down and beating you down. And the truth is, you've come to the fight unprepared. Remember the whole armor of God. You got your helmet of salvation, right? You got your breastplate of righteousness. You got your belt of truth. You got your shoes ready for the gospel. And, 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 you're, and you're fighting. And life has come. And your marriage just starts crumbling. Or the job it starts crumbling. Or your finances, unexpected things just start breaking. Or the anxiety or the way you think about yourself. Or an unexpected loss of a loved one. And life just starts beating you down. And you don't know how, how to fight. Because all of those pieces of armor are used for defending yourself. Let me tell you something though, you walk into a fight and all you do is try to defend yourself, eventually you're gonna get beat down. Eventually, you're gonna lose. But we're instructed in his word to put on the whole armor of God. See, I didn't mention one piece of armor. It's the sword of the spirit. It's God's word. It's the only offensive weapon that the Bible refers to, to fight against the enemy. To fight against the demonic forces. So if you go into your world, and you go into this world unprepared, without your offensive weapon, it's like going into a gunfight with the broom. And the enemy starts pressing on you. And making you believe and telling you things like, you'll never be loved. You're always going to be single. Hey, you're, this is just who you are. You're always going to be down, discouraged, alone. Hey, it doesn't matter what you do. Your marriage is never, look, there's somebody else for you. Hey, he's not going to get better. He's eventually going to die very soon. And you start believing the lies from the enemy. And he beats you, and he beats you. And until you pick up the word, until the word is in you so you can, def you can fight back, you're defenseless.
verse 16, it says, all scripture is given by the inspiration of God, the breath of God. It's carried about and it's profitable. Listen, it's profitable for doctrine, knowing what you believe, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. You want to know what the problem with all this is? We want transformation without the training. Training takes work. Training takes discipline. Training takes effort. Training takes time. And, and so we'll say things like, I'm, I'm just waiting on, to hear from God. I know God's going to answer my prayer. I know God's going to help me and tell me which direction to go or what to choose. I just need help from God. Let me tell you something. If you, if you say you want to hear from God and you never open up His Word, then you're more concerned with finding a solution to your problem than you are the Savior to your problem. Too many of us are looking for solutions when we should be longing for our Savior to know what Jesus says, how Jesus thinks, how Jesus would respond. What God has promised over you, over your children. And the fact is, we don't want to train. Because getting into His Word is going to require work, it's going to require time, intentionality, and effort. And we're too busy. We're too busy. And there's 31,102 verses in the Bible. And you look at that whole thing and it's very daunting. It's just big. A lot of words you may or may not understand. If you spent 12 minutes a day, just 12 minutes reading the Bible, you'd finish in one year. 12 minutes. If you want to know the will of God in your life, know the Word of God. That's how important this is. So what do we do? I love this series because we're, we're talking about spiritual discipline, so there's some practical applications to do. Here's what I have for you. Number one, choose a regular time to read the Word and do it. So today, pick a time that you're going to start tomorrow reading the Word, and then do it. Do it. Now, I want to tell you that most people have a phone that's smart, and you can download the YouVersion Bible app. YouVersion Bible app. It's the most popular Bible app out there. It's totally free, a, a church in Oklahoma, uh, ha has created that, and it is reaching millions upon millions of people. You can choose your, your version that you want, the translation that you understand the best. I, I will tell you, I preach from the ESV, because studies have shown the ESV and the NASB are two of the most accurate word-for-word -word translations. The the NLT and the NIV, they're easier to understand, but you choose a version that you can read. Go ahead and create an account on there because number two, we're going to study in community. Study the Word in community. Did you, know, did you know that studying the Bible alone, that's a foreign concept to Jesus. I mean, you think about it. First, they didn't have the written word, the Bible, as we know it. And whenever they did study scriptures, they did it together in community. Because growth happens, understanding happens, connection happens in community. So that's why it's really important, listen, here at Vision, for you to identify your next step. Some of you, your first step, 
is to commit to coming every single week. Because here you will be under the teaching and the preaching and the prayer of God's word with God's people. This is a place where we can hear, study, and learn the word. This is a place that the word will always be prioritized and always be preached. That's your first step. Here's the second thing. Commit to a life group. Commit to a life group. I mean, if, if this is true, if, if, if we need to be studying together, then what better opportunity to do that than in a life group? If you haven't joined, what are you waiting for? What's holding you back from being obedient? Maybe your next step is a D group. A discipleship group. A group of three to five people. Meeting weekly. Memorizing scripture. We've lost the discipline of memorization. We teach our children how to do it, and they can do it, but as adults, are you memorizing scripture? I don't have time. Really? Well, it's too hard. Really? You want to know God's will? Know the word. And so we've created on the YouVersion Bible app a 15-day plan. For 15 days, our church is going to walk through this plan together. So sign up on the YouVersion app. You can go on our Vision app right now, and it'll take you to the, the Bible plan and join us, and we can see everybody doing it. We can engage, and we can talk. But for 15 days, we're going to be reading the same stuff every single day. It's not overwhelming. It's not a lot, but it's something. You want to hear from God? You want to know God? You want to respond like Jesus did? We got to know the word. We got to know the word. Thank you, Pastor Chris, for that message on how important it is to get in God's word. We know as followers of Jesus that it's so crucial, so important to get in the word of God so that the word of God can get into us and that we can lead our lives based on uh, the foundation that we laid down that we found in God's word. And so thank you so much for reminding us to practice that spiritual discipline in our lives. Maybe you heard the message today and you want to know more about Jesus, or maybe you just wanna say, you know what, I'm done running, I'm done uh, trying to do things my own way. I need to surrender and give my life up to Jesus and make him Lord and Savior of my life. If that's you, we want to encourage you to email us at info at visionbaptistchurchnc.com or let us know uh, that you want us to connect with you so that we can talk with you a little bit more about Jesus and salvation. Or maybe it's baptism or maybe you want to join the church or whatever your next step might look like for you. We want to walk you through that and lead you through that. And so please contact us, info at visionbaptistchurchnc.com. Dot com or get a hold of our, our church staff or just someone that can help you better understand uh, some of the things that you have questions on. One last thing and then I'm done. Uh, I want to uh, just encourage you as followers of Jesus. One spiritual discipline is giving. And so um, one thing we want to challenge our people is that when you give, we get to give. And so when you give to the Lord, we get to use what is given to reach as many people as possible in the 919 community. And I don't know about you, but I know of a lot of people in my own life personally that need a, a little pick-me-up, that need an encouragement, that need a reminder from God that He is there, that He loves them. And so all of that can be accomplished when you give faithfully to the Lord. And so there are several different ways for you to do that. You can do it on our app, you can do it on our website, you can text the number, uh, or you can wait till next week and just drop it off old school way in the box in the uh, worship center. I want to pray with us before we leave. And so uh, if you would, bow your heads and, and close your eyes. God, you are so good. You are so faithful. Uh, God, we give you all the praise today. Whether our lives look good or bad or whatever whatever journey, whatever season we're, we're walking through right now, God, I can confidently say that you are good because it doesn't change. You don't change based on our circumstances, God. You are who you are. You are who you say you are. And so I love you for that, God. I pray that you would just be with everyone watching right now, that you would uh, just be with us. Remind us that you are near. Remind us that you are faithful. Remind us that you are good. And help us to know that you are good, that you are love, that you are grace, you are mercy. By getting in your word, by studying your word, by memorizing your word, 
so that we can become better followers of you. God, help us have a great week. We love you. We pray all these things in your name. Amen. Church, you guys have a great week. Thank you.